Imagine coming home after incarceration to absolutely nothing. Imagine having nowhere to go, no help, no support, and being tossed out to the world with nothing at all. Imagine being homeless. Imagine being homeless and it's freezing outside. Well, guess what? Those are exactly the conditions that we are in right now. You're about to meet one awesome individual named Bruce who has been incarcerated, who has battled addiction, and is homeless. This is real life. This is raw. This is gritty. This is uncut. And this is the After Prison Show. So Bruce, tell us a little bit about your story. Well, I come out of rehab in 2013 and promptly lost my girlfriend. You know the old saying, uh, she met Jody. That's the one that's laid up in your girl when you're locked up. Right, yeah. And that was true, it happens. But I was in rehab, so technically I wasn't really locked up. Prior to that I was, I did four and a half years. But I remained on probation. What were you on probation for? Um, forgery, I gave the police a fake name. Okay to elude arrest and it worked 12 times. Wow. And I got chased 12 times. <laughs> wow. And escaped 12 times. <laughs> so when they caught me, they were mad. I can understand. So I got a pretty decent sentence on that, but it was just given a fake name. It wasn't identity theft. It wasn't fraud. It wasn't taking anybody's money. Right. Had nothing to do with that. But it's a black mark on your record that stays. Oh, absolutely. And when you apply for jobs, people see that. And I hear tell from the police department, it never goes away. Oh, absolutely. But a lot of places can't do background checks past 10 years. But they're finding ways around this with the Patriot Act. Explain a little bit more about that. The Patriot Act made it easier for everybody to get into your personal life. Okay. Is the bottom line on that. And it has been a big effect on felons everywhere. Wow. And I did research because I do go to college online. I've been to campuses with federal funding, hoping to improve my lot in life. And that's tough too. It's hard making it living how I live. And ex explain real quick exactly how you live. Well, I live in a tent. I uh, just got a big one. It was donated to me. Right. I graduated from a six by eight area times four and a half foot tall to a 12 by 16. All right, this is my path. It takes about eight or nine minutes to get to my spot. I go deep in because through observance and watching other homeless pump, most people don't go far in the woods. And there are some homeless predators who prey on other homeless and wreck their campsites and steal their belongings. Wow, that's pretty crazy. And then, um, life could be better, but I don't know how to make the most out of anything. I don't have expectations. I learned a long time ago, if you have ex too many expectations, you know, you can shoot too high, then you be let down. You can let your own self down. If there's no expectation, you can make it. And then you can think on how to survive. Now, I have an old campsite in there that the guy who was stalking the girl I take care of totally trashed. Uh, let me tell you what, he trashed it. He did a hell of a job on it. Why did he trash it? Because she told him she was not interested in him that way. And he carried a big gun on him. He come out here and shot in these woods three nights in a row when it was discovered that he lived in a tent. Wow. Some friends of mine hunted for him and found out he was homeless. So in repayment for what he did to me, I didn't have to do a thing. They wrecked his. So is there a... So he came out here and shot at us for three nights in a row out here. He knew we were out here somewhere, just not there anymore. And he could have killed us. I called the police three nights in a row. Finally, they did something. They come and took that big gun away from him. He carried a 45. Magnum on the side. You know, you always hear about this, uh, the way the homeless sort of take the law into their own hands. You yeah. Know? And a lot of that goes unnoticed or unre unrecognized or even unmentioned. Yeah. Homeless killing other homeless individuals. Police yeah. don't really do a lot about that. Yeah. Maybe they see, uh, maybe they see certain situations like that and they just don't even pay it any mind, honestly. Have you ever witnessed anything like that? No. Um, I know some people wanted to kill this guy I was talking about because come to find out he had wrecked other people's sites and everybody kind of knew it. Well, I proved it. Right. So then it was on for him. So he, he clean left the state. 
Wow. Because he, I, I made it bad for him. I handled it right. I went to all the places he hung out and told him what a stalker he was. He even played with the girls' bras and underwears when he wrecked the site. Laid him in a semicircle on the ground. Now, what was that about? So I let everybody know what a predator was and what a thief he was. So he got tore off for stealing. And another guy's campsite he had set on fire. Well, he didn't get caught for that, but he now has two arson charges. He's, he's in jail with arson charges and larceny charges. Wow. So it came back. Now, in the old days, I could have made somebody like him disappear under these leaves and dirt and stuff. But wow. no, I can't jeopardize my life and my future. No, not at all. I, I can't say it wouldn't have felt good to do something for him. But I'm learning to, like, well, you know, I got an AA meeting. I have some kind of conscious contact with a God of our understanding that's the same in AA. I read my Bible. I, I try to think of some kind of hope that there's this good God up there with some kind of plan for me. But, you know, like, Doubting Thomas and Peter, you know, I have my doubts a lot. What would you describe your mind state like right now? Do you keep a pretty positive frame of mind, even given your circumstances? Yes, I do. I don't know how I do it. Um, I'm well liked. I got a good reputation in that area you picked me up in. Right. I have people who call me. I'm wondering if I'm coming out today. Wow. Because they just like, I make people laugh. And I've helped countless students with their homework in college. So when I was locked up for the four and a half years, uh, I studied. Right. And I discovered that I was basically functionally illiterate. And I was also hinted by a prison doctor that, according to some of my childhood stories, I exhibited signs of being mildly autistic. I know this. Most of my life, I never catch on to the basic physical clues of other people, like an autistic would, wouldn't. And some of you things I thought I knew, I didn't know. This is my trash system. Apparently I got a new critter to trash because it made a mess out here. So trash here, so I ain't got to drag these across the ditch, two ditches. Take it out to a dumpster somewhere. Wow. That was my trash system when I, not, I got a trap. I catch critters and release them somewhere else away from here. Right. That way I don't have to kill them and they ain't turn up stuff. But that, that wasn't a true charge. Wow, look Along at this. Along with the weapon charge, which is a little cheating knife for cutting the twine on a weed whacker. I'll carry the tool bag and a weed whacker when he came safe for me. Holy and moly. And the forgery charge, which started it all because of uh, me lying to the police. saw who I was. Bruce, this is uh, this is pretty impressive right here. All right, this is my setup. Um, I do manage to get potatoes and apples. I'll feed deer apples because it's nice for Shannon. She's like my little girl. And um, let me clarify something. Nobody would expect some man to take care of a younger girl without expecting something in return. Absolutely. And a lot of people question me and Shannon. They're like, what is up? With There's nothing up. So you're basically a father figure. Uh, and a mother figure. I'm both. I have to deal with her women's issues sometimes, too. I discovered recently. So one day I told her here recently. I said, I'm not only your father figure. I'm your mother figure, too. I'm right. both. Right. So there's a reason for this setup. You don't put food inside a tent. If you haven't cleared the critters away from you, some will eat a hole in your tent to get at it. Oh, I can imagine. And then you got spiders and everything else to worry about. And the worst thing you gotta worry about is like a brown recluse or a black widow. They're not ind indigenous to this area, but they, uh, they do show up. This is the uh, rain cover. I don't care how, how, where you set a tent up at. Rain's gonna get inside unless you take precautions. This is at an angle. I don't have a steady drop of rain coming down here. It all goes to the back. And the back's at an angle going over the ground. Wow. And they're on the sides. I learned this a long time ago. It just came to me. People always talk about to get tent of water up under their tent. Well, if you keep the ground area around the tent dry, nothing's coming up under there. They can rain this ass off out here. Ain't no rain going in that baby. So that's what this is for right here. Yep. Keep the ground around it dry. Corners ain't too bad. I got some more pieces. I'm gonna box this off up here on both sides to keep all this dry. And I got a large top tarp in the back I'm gonna line among them trees as a windbreaker sometimes the wind comes through here and it beats it up how long how long have you been at this location since March and how when it comes time to move from a location how long I mean how do you move all this stuff this is quite a well, bit I'm of stuff been blessed I've made such an impression on people I got some very good friends so you get help with I can, uh, I can call some people and people will show up I can get this stuff into a smaller package uh, get the help to get it out near the road, and then vehicles will pull up, load in the truck, and go. Wow. And this is like a 
shed back here. There's the trash. I got some tools, farming tools on the other side. I found some flat dry land back there. I may be able to put a garden in. I'm a green thumb. I've been farming for many years. Right. I do plants. So this is like a shed to keep this stuff dry. And I got the same flap on the other side. And I can show you the inside. So I got binoculars looking around, nice set. These bags are also, like if we get, oh, get lucky and get a bunch of ramen noodles, like I said, no food inside. Right, absolutely. And out here they can't really get to nothing. And keeps other predators out too. This is a hinge door. Pretty neat. Wow. Ugh. Don't come in, I'll put a light on. A lamp, a uh, candle. But we'll sit in here, download movies on a laptop, and watch them. This is the cook stove and the pots and pans. And this is an old ancient one a lady from a church gave me. I cook at a couple churches for the needy and the homeless, by the way. One church we serve three to five hundred every week on Thursdays. Wow. You're and homeless, and yet you're helping the homeless as well. Well, I know what it's like to be hungry. Absolutely. And um, I don't like to see people go hungry. Um, that girl, Shannon, who stays with me, she will eat before I do if there ain't nothing. If there's very little, I'll let her eat. I told her, as long as you're with me, you won't go hungry, and you'll never be cold. We sleep in warmth at night. Yeah, I was just about to ask, what do you do for heat? Because it is freezing outside right now. I can right cut now. that on to warm it up in here. I can also wrap this in plastic tape, take the plastic uh, garbage bags apart, make big long pieces out of them, tape them together. If you wrap a tent, you control moisture content inside, and it also helps hold heat. Right. And also, if you put a blanket over this, I don't care if it's zero degrees outside. This works like insulation in a house. You got an outside wall, you got your sheetrock, in between you got insulation, same principle. Put a wool blanket over this, we climb inside with our blankets and zip that door shut. Our body heat alone will cause an ambient temperature inside of there between 68 and 72 degrees and maintain it all night long. Feet don't get cold, no cold spots on the body, nothing. Wow. A little bit of science here, this thing's clicked for me. What I've discovered is the taller the trees are, the cooler the ground is in the heat of the summer. So it's almost like your air conditioning. Being Pretty much. We being never sweat at trees. nighttime or slept in any discomfort in the heat out here. It's pretty hot summer. You go out in the street and bust down the sweat. You come in here when these leaves are in foliage, good stuff. Slept in comfort at night. Wow. Now you can't do that in this big tent in the summertime. You'll burn up in here. Right. But so this or I'll get another small one leave this as is. We'll go back in the old spot and that's where we'll sleep in the summer. It was cool as mud over there. So Bruce, let's talk a little bit about addiction. Can you explain to us how addiction has plagued your life at all? Uh, do you suffer from any addiction right now? I've battled cocaine off and on. When I was younger, I thought I was quite alcoholic, but I can I can walk away from anything. Cocaine had me by the balls for a while. Right. Um, occasionally it pops up, but you're out here on the streets, somebody shows up and say, you wanna do a line or two, you know, and they're offering, you ain't paying nothing. Occasionally, I've taken somebody up on that, right. um, but I ain't like I used to be. I had to uh, every dime I got, I had to go get me some. Um, it did not play a part in my homelessness. I mean, some people are just poor. So, can you talk to us a little bit about what led to your homelessness? I'm just poor. I had a. Most people have some type of family they can go to. I really don't have that. My mother spent years burying and taking care of the sick and dying in the family. And I have a sister who has some pretty bad uh, health issues. She had that diverticulitis, I believe it's called. She's had some intestines removed because of it and other issues. And she's been on her deathbed uh, due to an attack. Uh, same man attacked her twice and tried to kill her. And my father died from Agent Orange destroying him, his lungs and all, from Vietnam. Everybody just started like dropping like flies, for lack of a better way of putting it. So you just didn't have any sort of support so, whatsoever. Yeah, and what my mother said something to me once years ago was that I knew how to survive, and she 
kind of counted on that. And I'm glad she could count on that. I do know how to survive. She's kept you alive. She's had enough on her back, you know, without, you know, 49 year old son trying to come and sponge and live off of her. Bruce, we really appreciate the fact that you agreed to do the after prison show with us. Um, this is Shannon. This is the young lady to stand with you. The world's getting a chance to meet you now for the first time as well. I, I understand you're shy, and we just appreciate you for agreeing to show the world who you are. Right now, for the time being, what we do have is we have some toiletry items. We have a purse for you. We have some items for you as well, Bruce. And we'll just hope that you'll accept that on behalf of the After Prison Series. And we're going to continue to stay in contact with you guys and really try to help you out. For you, Shannon, Thank you. there are some Good. items in here. And for you, Bruce, it's just a few items. There's some toiletries, some soap, some toothpaste, things like that. They're always going to be in it. Thank you. Thank you. Stay warm. And we will be in contact with y'all real soon. It is cold out here freezing actually we just shot an awesome episode with Bruce probably some of the most compelling footage I've ever seen definitely the most compelling footage I've ever shot never seen a homeless person's campsite never seen how a homeless person lives it definitely was a first-time experience for me and I'm sure it was for a lot of you out there as well look I can't emphasize enough how much we need these microphones, these lavalier microphones, to enhance our sound quality on the After Prison series. I am encouraging every one of you out there to visit our GoFundMe campaign at gofundme.com backslash afterprison and please consider a donation. It's not going to take much for us to enhance our sound quality. And it's our sound quality that means the most to this show. It's the dialogue that we're having with these individuals that is the most compelling. Or seeing the campsite of an individual who has nothing. Prison can be the most detrimental experience for any individual. Coming home, you can come home to nothing. As you saw with Bruce. As you see the After Prison series attempt to pay it forward, I hope you'll help us reach the level that we believe we really can reach. Because until then, well, I guess you really leave me no other choice. Tis the season, and we need donations. Toodles. <laughs>